think about the worst decisions you've made in life, the most damage you've caused to relationships, all the comments and choices you wish you could pull back from the chasm of history, almost every single regret you have can be traced back to an instance in time which is preceded by a moment of haste and impulse, a singular moment where had you slowed down and pressed pause, the story may have unfolded differently. What was missing in each of these stories? It was silence. In this video, using the trilogy of the Godfather movies as our primary backdrop, we're going to explore why silence is power. We will look at two areas of everyday interaction where the power of silence can be subtly narrative defining for you. One, silence in your speech. And two, silence in your decisions. The daily expression of power by Vito and Michael Corleone are often not displayed by physical strength or traditional hyper-masculine personas. Instead, their power as gladiators in suits is always first conveyed through the way they carry and conduct themselves. Whilst appearing counterintuitive, Vito and Michael manifest power, authority and confidence through the initial suppression of primitive and violent urges rather than the impulsive enactment of them. It is a silence that pervades their interactions which quietly exhibits their power. Vito and Michael are compelling yet soft-spoken orators. When they speak, their audience listens. They are brief. Joseph McCormick, a renowned expert in strategic communications, proposes there are two components to articulating a brief message. You must be one, clear, and two, concise. Vito and Michael's mode of speech is permeated with silence. They wield the power of the pause, an understated speaking weapon. A display of authority is associated with the presentation of a state free from tension and anxiety. In a relaxed state, people speak slower and they pause. If there's some guy running around this city saying Michael Coley, what do we do with a piece of like that? He's a dog. When you pause, and interject transient moments of silence, it almost counterintuitively recaptures people's attention and refocuses them on your message. Communication resides in the realm of silence. It is in the silence, the pause between two moments that the listener assimilates the message. It's human nature to find silence uncomfortable. Many will clamor to extinguish a silence like a blazing inferno. Silence can deafen people into awareness and force them to act out of discomfort to fill the void. If you can condition yourself to become comfortable with silence, you will command a power so few possess. The rent stays like a buffer. And when you pause, it signals clearly to your audience that what's about to come next is considered, that you've thought about precisely what you're going to say, that you mean every word, the impression of precision and veracity in what you say is powerful. I want you to help me take my revenge. Michael, anything. What can I do? Settle these troubles with the Rosano brothers. A fundamental component of power is certainty. 
when a person speaks with what appears to be an unshakable conviction in their statement, it immediately engenders a perception of certainty. But I want your answer in the money by noon tomorrow. And one more thing, don't you contact me again, ever. Senator, you can have my answer now if you like. My offer is this, nothing. Not even the fee for the gaming license, which I would appreciate if you would put up personally. In the midst of crisis or confusion, human nature can misplace value in certainty over what may otherwise be considered more appropriate. Kindling a perception of certainty in speech by speaking directly to the point without embellishment through the use of pauses whilst maintaining eye contact confers an invisible yet powerful credence to your message. Fredo, you're my older brother and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. Silence invites the opportunity to control what you reveal. Many of us are oftentimes guilty of revealing too much information when we're enthralled in the moment, either to our embarrassment or to our detriment, rarely to our benefit. Both Vito and Michael recognize the power of silence in refraining from exposing their thoughts outside of their inner circle. They embodied the idea of moving in silence until it was time to declare checkmate. The Italians will guarantee it. Oh, are you telling me that the Italians guarantee our investment? Wait, wait. I have a sentimental weakness for my children and I spoil them as you can see. They talk when they should listen. Santino, come here. What's the matter with you? Never tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. As information is power, you can use silence in conversation to temper the flow of information to harness that power. In Robert Greene's magnum opus book, The 48 Laws of Power, law three is conceal your intentions and law four is say less than necessary. Ultimately, the hybrid of these two laws aim to keep your plans in the dark under the cover of silence. This serves to diminish the power of those who wish to harm you as they can't hit a target they can't see. Don Corleone, I, I wish you would have let me know you were coming. I, I could have prepared something for you. I didn't want you to know I was coming. You never let anyone know what you're thinking. The combination of pausing, maintaining eye contact, and delivering an unequivocal message curated to share only what is necessary truly harnesses the power of silence in conversation. Michael Corleone mastered this art of power to perfection. Michael is the paragon of a man that possesses mastery in both strategy and patience. This alliance, consummated on a foundation built on silence, breeds Michael's quiet, unrelenting power. The English poet John Dryden writes in his 1681 poem, Absalom and Ahitophel, beware the fury of a patient man. Michael makes decisions in silence outside of an echo chamber, far removed from the noise of the chaos, which culminated in the need to reach a decision in the first place. Michael employs a version of a five-year, 50,000 feet test. He strategically evaluates his choices, projecting himself to vantage points, both forward in time and outside of himself from above. By taking the time to pause, we give silence the opportunity to interrogate our emotions and question how proportionate our proposed response is. 
it reinforces the reality we face, which in the eye of the storm, we may be oblivious to. How often have we regretted a decision within hours after executing it, or decided differently after a night's sleep, once the heat of battle and the fog of war has dissipated? Like a game of chess, silence has the power to forge the mental space to play out multiple scenarios and the reverberations of each through time. What I think has happened has happened. I'm gonna leave here tonight. You see, all our people are businessmen. Their loyalty is based on that. One thing I learned from Pop was to try to think as people around you think. Now, on that basis, anything's possible. Almost every decision in our lives can benefit from the silence preceding it. Rarely does anyone regret taking a pause before making a choice. Michael's art of waiting, his patience, is what distinguished him from his brother, Sonny. Their father, Vito, himself shares the thought that Sonny was not an effective leader for the family. I never thought you were bad, Consigliere. I thought Santino was a bad guy. Rest in peace. Why? Because Sonny was infamous for his hot temper, to act before thinking. He was almost entirely at the mercy of his emotions, a slave to his temper and ruled by the present. Sonny made decisions whilst drowning in the noise. Let the smoke clear, Pop can negotiate. No, Pop can't do nothing until he's better. I'm gonna decide what's gonna be. All right, but your war's me. costing us a lot of money. Nothing's coming in, we can't do business. Well, neither can they. Don't they worry don't about it. Please, please don't worry about it. We can't afford a stalemate. Well, then there ain't no more stalemate. I'm gonna end it by killing that old bastard. Right. Yeah, you're getting a great it. reputation. I hope you're enjoying it. Well, you just do what I tell you to do. Just wait there. It is this haste and impulsiveness that ultimately led to Sonny's death. Sonny's emotional predictability allowed his enemies to devise a masterful plot of luring him out the Corleone compound to his execution. Lack of silence meant the loss of power for Sonny. As primal as he was, Sonny's sensitivity and fiery transparency differentiated him from a calculating and seemingly cold Michael. It is in their father, Vito, that we saw the perfect balance of the two worlds. A man that was considered uniquely endearing, yet equally formidable. He had come to me in friendship. And the scum that ruined your daughter would be suffering this very day. And if by chance an honest man like yourself should make enemies, then he would become my enemies. And then they would fear you. The silence that Michael resides in empowers him to not only mastermind decisions, but the practical application of them. Michael doesn't just work through a problem theoretically, he presents actionable, measurable solutions that are detailed, precise, and effectively planned from beginning to end with great forethought. Get our informers to find out where it's going to be held. Now, we insist it's a public place, a bar, a restaurant, some place where there's people so I feel safe. They're going to search me when I first meet them, right? So I can't have a weapon on me then. But if Clemenza can figure a way to have a weapon planted there for me, then I'll kill them both. Michael has a quiet confidence, which owes its lineage to the immutable power silence affords him in becoming content with his choices. You have to understand, I, I had a whole different destiny planned. He does not seek approval or validation. Michael is a self-validating organism and not in a rebellious or contrarian way, but in an authentic, self-confident manner. If anything in this life is certain, the 
if history's taught us anything, it says you can kill anyone. He has an almost incorruptible self-assuredness, and this is a characteristic he imbues before he's pulled into the world of the family business and long before he becomes Don Corleone. They're saps because they risk their lives for strangers. They risk, the, risk their lives for their country. Your country ain't your blood, you remember that. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way. Well, if you don't feel like that, why don't you just quit college and go to, go to join the army? I did. I enlisted in the Marines. This continuity of confidence and assertiveness we see in Michael is a power that's within reach of all of us. Where noise, impulse and haste can create doubt, silence which allows deliberation and precision to ensue can create conviction and conviction is a fundamental element of power. The world values decisiveness. However, we live in an age where immediacy and impulsivity can be mistaken for decisiveness. Whilst there are domains of life where the ability to make accelerated choices can be instrumental, this has little value if they lead to arbitrary and untenable positions. Michael is the apex of decisiveness. His decisions are completely devoid of tentativeness. It is the silence he immerses himself in that gives birth to this decisive power.